A while back, uh, the moderator of um, Microbe Hunter, Oliver, uh, answered a question from one of the um, uh, people that are get onto his website to look at his um, videos. Uh, and uh, they asked about making slides, permanent slides. And um, I thought that I would contribute this video. I've done, I contributed once before, but with limited success. So I'll try it again. I'll be beset with a lot of technical problems with the uh, camera and the positioning. And it's making a good video is not always as easy as it looks. Uh, but anyway, making um, permanent um, microscope slides has been a hobby of mine for quite some time. And I am more interested in making permanent microscope slides of insects rather than of tissues, etc. Insects, insect parts, flies, wasps, ticks, or fruit flies, etc., etc. Very interesting. So, um, but making a permanent slide uh, that can last 100 years um, requires a certain technique, which I wanted to share with you uh, for those that might be interested in making uh, permanent uh, slides. So right here you see in front of you a uh, what was at one time a red wasp. And um, I processed this slide, uh, this insect, to make a slide, uh, you can see how thin that is, right? It's very thin, thinner than a thin as thin as a piece of paper, and it was um, processed in such a way that you can see the structures uh, more clearly. Let's do the lighting a little bit better there. Right here is a uh, fly. This is a house fly. Let me uh, move this out of the way here. This is a house fly here. Uh, the of particular interest with a housefly are the mouth parts and the feet and the structures of the wing, etc. Uh, so um, I'm going to talk a little bit about that. So let's start from the beginning. How do we make permanent microscope slides? Well, first when you capture an insect let's say a fly, a beetle, or something like that, uh, you might want to um, preserve it in um, alcohol. Here we have little insects. And then when you are ready to start the uh, uh, processing, what you will do is soak the insect in um, some potassium hydroxide. In my case, it would be um, uh, it would be saturated potassium hydroxide. Here we have some spiders that are in the process of being processed in this uh, potassium hydroxide. For me, I prefer a saturated solution of potassium hydroxide. Uh, you can purchase this from various um, chemical companies. This happens to be potassium hydroxide in flake form and you just add the flakes to water continu continuously stirring and until you get yourself the uh, desired concentration. Some people have said that there's a 10% solution uh, of um, the, the uh, potassium hydroxide. I prefer a saturated solution. Some people say you can leave it in there for three, four hours and that, that depends on the insect uh, insects have an exoskeleton that's keratin and um, it, sometimes they're hard and black or very deep brown and the potassium hydroxide um, has a tendency to um, bleach, somewhat bleach the um, exoskeleton so you can see the structures inside or um, also it softens them so that you can squeeze out the um, internal organs, etc. So potassium hydroxide. Now, the amount of time that the uh, potassium hydroxide, uh, the insect would be in, it depends 
on the insect. So there's no rule. It's trial and error. Uh, a spider, if it's a um, small spider, it might be anywhere from four hours to a day. A, uh, a black beetle, it might be days. Uh, I, you have to, this is trial and error on your part. So before we start with any of this, I want to talk about safety. Uh, safety in making uh, microscope slides is paramount because we are dealing with, in some cases, highly toxic chemicals like xylene and uh, the mounting medium uh, that I use, permount mounting medium, which is made by Fisher Scientific. It looks like it's repackaged uh, and sold under a different brand, but it is permount mounting medium. Uh, this is in a toluene base. It's a resin in a toluene base. But th these, these um, resins are good for 100 years. Uh, before, they used to use um, Canada balsam, which had a tendency to yellow and um, crack over time. But regarding the safety issue, because the, because the solvents that we use like xylene are highly toxic, they can cause liver cancer, um, liver damage, uh, you, we, we wanna make sure that we don't breathe or get it on our skin. So one of the things that I do is make sure when I handle it, that I use acrylonitrile gloves that are um, uh, resistant to these solvents like xylene. That's very important. Also, uh, I wanted to show you that I use finger cots, these uh, finger cots. When you're dealing with um, insects, you know, you don't know that flies are dirty animals and, you know, you don't want to get that stuff on your fingers. It might get into some cracks, etc., etc. So I always use finger cots like this. They're disposable. Uh, they're cheap. You can buy them in bag of 500 or something like that. They're relatively inexpensive. And also, because we're using uh, small insects most of the time, it's, sometimes you're going to have a great deal of difficulty actually seeing what you're working with. So I have a pair of these uh, magnifying glasses that I purchased on eBay that has their own illumination system and interchangeable lenses. Magna you can pull the lens out, put a new one in, range from half, uh, half a magnification up to two and a half magnification. And as I said before, because of the toxic nature of the xylene, when I'm putting my slides together, I make sure I use a face mask with activated charcoal filters. In this case, the um, face mask filters are by 3M, model 6001, activated carbon, which is um, suitable for solvents like xylene. Uh, I, when I prepare my microscope slides, initially I do them indoors because I'm only using water and alcohol. Uh, but when I get to the point where I'm going to actually um, put them in a clearing agent like xylene, then I do them outside where there's good ventilation. Plus, I wear the um, activated charcoal filter. That is a must. I'm not going to deviate from that. So the finger cots, uh, the uh, activated charcoal filters, and the acrylonitrile gloves uh, are what you need when you handle the solvents. Now... Um, Prior to, prior to mounting or starting to prepare the insect, what we have to do is after they have been in the uh, potassium hydroxide, we will take the insect out and um, we will put it on a flat microscope slide and then we will dehydrate the specimen to remove all of the water. Now, I make my own alcohol. Uh, I buy denatured alcohol. It's very inexpensive. It's 100% alcohol. It can be purchased at a uh, department store. It's And I make my own uh, concentrations of alcohol from 70 to 90. Um, if you want to make 70% alcohol, like I have here, you can take, um, you can take the 100% uh, Seven parts of 100% and three parts of water will make 70% alcohol. 
and then you can take the nine parts of 100% alcohol and one part of water to make 90%. And of course, the 100 is just straight 100. So after the potassium hydroxide and then uh, mounting it onto a slide uh, for dehydration, we, we put it in 70, 90, and 100% alcohol for approximately 24 hours for each step. Uh, I know it can be done faster than that, but I don't want to take any chances because it is, making slides is time consuming uh, and I don't want to spoil a good slide by improper procedures. So uh, we'll move on. This is a 10 minute video. I'm going to do a series of these. So um, we're going to move on to video number two, where we're actually going to take an insect and mount it on a slide. Thank you.